<laughs> there we go. We on? All right. Hey, everybody. It's Zach from My Shire Farm. Uh, we were supposed, we were scheduled to do, uh, we were scheduled to go to Edison State Community College tonight uh, and uh, do a presentation about quail and homesteading and things like that. Uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 that was canceled, uh, the Zoom thing was not working out. I did not have time to do a PowerPoint form, so we are going to be doing a YouTube Live uh, for the students that we're supposed to be attending. Uh, so that's what we're doing tonight. Um, is anybody on yet? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so if you are the, a student or if you're the teacher, uh, go ahead and just comment that you're here. Um, we will get started. I will wait just a second to give you the tour. Um, I, we've been crazy busy today. So I'm not too sure how many students will be attending. Probably should have asked that. Um, but if anybody has any questions so far, uh, you're more than welcome to ask. Uh, again, it's Zach at My Shire Farm. Uh, we are a quail farm. Uh, this is our quail building that we'll show you. <clears throat> Any questions? Okay. So give me just a second here. I'm going to reach out to Brad. All right, so I will wait for a second for him to respond. Uh, Brad, I just uh, messaged you on Facebook. Um, how many people we got? 11, okay. I think that was... Give me just a second, sorry. Pro usually I'm more prepared. It's been one crazy day. So I'll wait for him to respond. Uh, this is our shipping room. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, eventually, when we slow down or have the time, this room will be a bathroom. Uh, we made this for customers. We have customers from a lot of states uh, come and pick things up, do tours. Right now, with the COVID-19, we're not letting anyone into the barn, um, so we kind of put that on hold. Uh, but that's that. This is just our little storage area for, you know, pressure washers and shop vacs and things like that. Did you want to say something, George? Oh, it looked like you were about to say something. I'm like, all right. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've got a couple freezers, fridge. Uh, this is my desk. Um, when we do orders, obviously I've got the orders there. Uh, and then when we box them up, we put them in there, roll this out all the way. Uh, put the peanuts in it, and uh, and they're good to go. So it's kind of like, you know, we'll take the order, uh, pad foam, or foam, wait, pad foam pad, uh, and then we'll make mark the name on it. We'll send it all the way down, and then when I've got all the orders ready to go, I just go down the line and put peanuts in them. Uh, we'll tape them up, and then uh, we just roll this thing all the way out to the van outside, uh, and then we go to the post office. So that's kind of how we do that. Um, so my, my plan was kind of... Uh, okay, so Brad's on, so I'll just keep going. Uh, my plan is I'm going to kind of give you a tour of the entire barn, uh, and then I can answer any questions. So if you have questions about uh, anything like this, whether it's an operation, I did talk to him before and kind of talked to him about as far as like the, the small business aspect of it more than anything else. Um, so we are going to talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about egg production, sales, things like that. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll be good to go. Um, so, you know, obviously these are our foamers. So every day George and I get on, uh, write down the new foamer orders and put them in line. Uh, those are our pads. Um, we've got another freezer over here to butcher some quail for some corporate accounts. And then we also work with some falconers and wildlife reserves. Uh, so that's why we have two separate freezers because, well, we don't want them in the same freezer. So uh, this is our starter grower feed. We get this from 
um, front view feeds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we get this from Front View Feeds. They do have a website, frontviewfeeds.com, uh, where you can check out if it's local to you. Um, so this is our starter grower feed, which in this room is our brooder room, which we'll get to. Uh, and then this is kind of our storage for supplies. Uh, we've got 24 count cartons, 30 count cartons, egg scissors, things like that. Uh, we do sell those, but we also use those for our corporate accounts as well. Uh, three base sink, just because everybody should have one. This is the main barn. So I'm actually going to switch with George so you can see all of it. Uh, so this is kind of our working table in here. Uh, so we put in 600 eggs a week uh, to grow out to sell because we sell hens and uh, we sell live birds and ship them. Um, so, you know, this is kind of where we collect those at. Uh, corporate accounts we get ready here, uh, things like that. And then we've got our starter, our, our layer feed all throughout here. Uh, this will last us 40 days, give or take, a little over a month. Uh, so it's, it looks like a lot, but it goes fast. Uh, so, you know, our feed's in the middle. Uh, our research, some of our research is in the back. We use a Wynola Ranch cage um, for a couple, for, to start the, the uh, research out. Uh, and then we've got a brooder back there to keep everything separate. Um, so that's that. Uh, we do have two research already in the colony cages. So those will be coming soon, which is kind of exciting. Uh, and then each cage has um, a different color or, you know, for example, uh, these two cages are all jumbo wilds. We've got jumbo whites. Uh, we've got mixed eggs over there. Uh, we've got pan all of our colors are on this side. So we have, I think it's 22 colors. Um, they're all Caternics. We only specialize in Caternics. Uh, we've got about 22 colors. Um, three of them are jumbos. About eight of them are feather sexable. The rest of them are uh, just fancy colors, kind of. Uh, but that's kind of our main barn. Uh, it does have lights in between each cage. They need about 18 hours of light. Um, and then it also has the light, the windows in between each cage uh, to give them natural sunlight as well as these that are going in like this. So that's coming in this way. Uh, so they get quite a bit of uh, natural light, which is also nice. Uh, so if you want to follow me, is there any questions yet? The egg rollouts, sure. Um, these are probably the easiest. I haven't used these for a little bit. Um, so that's our egg rollout. Yeah, it's on a slight change. This side needs to be pressure washed. Yeah. Uh, this side we actually use for our grow out jumbos to replace them. Uh, so first quarter, which is January, February, March, we do not uh, replace our jumbos, um, but that's kind of where they go, so we have room. Um, okay, I think that's it in here. Uh, so if you want to come on in here, I would like to thank everybody for joining us at Edison uh, State Community College. I think it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I really was enjoying to coming, coming to you uh, and being able to present a lot of things to you. So I know this is a little unorthodox, um, but I'm, I appreciate you joining in. So this is our brooder room. Um, I have a problem with doors, so I'm gonna close this real quick. All right, so this is our brooder room. Uh, each brooder uh, will hold our chicks for three weeks. Uh, so, for example, these are our youngest. These hatch Sunday. Monday. Monday. Today's Monday. Not today's. Today's Monday. Oh, I worked a weird day. Right. Yeah. They hatched yesterday. So they're a day old. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, these are a week old. So these are kind of cool. So we'll be taking the paper towels out on Thursday, week and a half. Uh, and then uh, at two weeks, we turn the lights off of them. Um, we did get rid of all of our three week olds today because we ship live birds every Monday. We just ship them out of here, which is kind of nice. 
Uh, this is our first ever incubator uh, that Papa built for us. Um, George is using this for all of his cool chickens and different poultry things. Uh, we don't like anything with our Caternix, uh, so we have a separate incubator just for the business side. Um, this is more of a fun funding. That is a great question. I promise I will answer that. I'm almost done with the tour. We'll sit down and then uh, we'll get into all that because it's, I'm going to talk about a lot of that stuff. Uh, but that's a great question. Um, and then, um, nah, we don't use that. Uh, so this is the lockdown. Uh, well, I'll show you the incubator first. So this is our incubator. It's super cool. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, a lot of in depth about our incubator in a video that I'm posting tomorrow. Uh, so if you are interested in this, that video is coming out tomorrow. Um, and uh, we'll go into this, but this holds, I forget how many we said, about 5,000. Yeah, this holds about 5,000. Our other incubator um, that's a, like this holds 7,000. Um, and then this one is a little bit more high tech where we can stop it whenever we want. Uh, and then turn the lights off if we want. The lights really don't do anything. I just think they look cool. Um, so this is our eggs. Not a lot is in there right now. A lot of research and things like that. Uh, and then this is our lockdown. So at day 14, we transfer them from this to that. They hatch out around day 17, day 18. Uh, and then we'll be cleaning this out tomorrow, uh, putting a new batch in on Friday, Thursday, Thursday and Friday big week. Uh, so that's about that. Um, I'm hoping you guys can hear me okay. Uh, the males are talking quite a bit right now. Um, so I'm going to get a chair for George uh, and then we will get into the business aspect. We should buy new wheels. All right. So the question was, how many orders do we ship a week? A month. A month. Oh, a month. Uh, that would be some math. Uh, well, we ship. We ship about 200 to 225 boxes. I can do the math. Hold on. I find the calculator. Yep. So we ship, I don't know how to use this calculator, about 42,000 eggs a month, give or take. So we ship about 42,000 eggs a month. Um, we ship anywhere in the U.S. We're something, we are, uh, we're MPIP. Uh, and AI clean. Um, so that gives us the ability to ship anywhere in the U.S. or U.S. territories, uh, such as Puerto Rico or things like that. Um, so we ship everywhere. Uh, we've been shipping everywhere since 2017 is when we actually started shipping eggs. Um, so we've been doing that. Uh, we've got about 5,000 quail. Um, and, uh, and we treat it like a real business. Um, we are uh, a family owned and operated farm. Um, George moved here about a year ago, about a year ago uh, to help be my right hand because uh, raising 5,000 quail, um, it's more than a one person job. Uh, and then my wife obviously homeschools and you know we do gardens and we have cows and we do this and we do that. Uh, so uh, yeah, George and I mainly, live in this place <laughs> is mainly what we do. Uh, it's, it's quite a bit of work. Um, we have weekly, we have daily cleanups, but we have weekly cleanups. Um, and then obviously we're shipping almost every day. We don't ship on Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, we learned a long time ago that 
typically they get caught up at the post office over the weekend. So it's just not worth shipping on Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, but we also have corporate accounts, so that typically goes to that. Um, is there any questions? Okay. So um, from my understanding, you guys were more interested in the business aspect of um, uh, raising uh, an animal or, or homesteading or anything like that. So what questions do you have for me? Um, you know, I mean, obviously there's expenses. It depends on also what you're raising um, and things like that. Until I get some questions, I can tell you uh, the most important thing that I would let you know is <clears throat> if you're going to try to, to uh, make money off of something, you need to know what you're doing. Uh, people respect um, being an expert at something. So that doesn't mean you have to have all the answers. There's plenty of times where I tell people I don't know. I, I have no idea. And if you ask me about any other type of uh, quail, because there's, you know, there's bob whites and there's valley quail and there's, you know, this, that and the other. I know nothing. I know Caternix quail and that is all I know. You ask me a chicken question and I'm just going to look at you like, I don't know what a chicken is, kind of thing. Um, go ahead. Her question was, do you believe that being by a big city like Miami Bird has helped your service? Uh, honestly, we do have... We do have quite a bit of farm pickups. I don't really advertise a lot of farm pickups. Uh, and all of our corporate accounts are south. Uh, so most of them are in Cincinnati. We've got a couple in Huber Heights. We've got a couple in Beaver Creek. I would say the majority of our cor corporate accounts are in Cincinnati. Um, and that was just spread by word of mouth. Um, we did quite a bit of advertising as well way back in the day. Um, so it does help, but it's, it doesn't matter where you're at. If, if you're doing things right uh, and if you know what you're doing and uh, if you've got a game plan and you're sticking to it, it doesn't matter if your town has a population of 50 or a population of 5 million. It, you can get it done. Has COVID-19 hurt your sales? Uh, no. Um, we did need to talk to the post office uh, numerous times to get permission to go to the post office, to get permission to ship, uh, and things like that. Um, but luckily, we've got some very good uh, relationships um, with the post office, and we worked everything out. Uh, so we did get on a small little delay, uh, but that worked itself out pretty fast. How long do you think it takes for your eggs to come in after you order them? <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know. Um, so we ship out the same day that they're laid. Um, typically, if it was any other time, about a week is what we do. Sometimes we go on a two-week wait on jumbos. Because of the whole COVID-19 thing, it seems like every hatchery, every breeder, everywhere is just selling out like crazy. Uh, so... You know, our SSCs are our Schofield Silvers. They were imported from Canada uh, back in 2000 something, four, 2007, can't remember. Um, those are my favorite, and we're about a week and a half out. Jumbo, all three of our jumbos are off of our website uh, because I'm three weeks out. Uh, so typically, my rule of thumb is I don't want people to wait. I would rather not make the sale than make someone upset. Uh, so usually at two weeks, I take them off the website because it's just been so crazy. Uh, I put them on back order for a week and uh, that didn't slow anybody down. So then I had to take them off because it just stresses me out. Do you think having a bunch of collars is a huge advantage or specializing on the sides like jumpers? That's a really good question. Is that from a student? That's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> it depends on what you're doing. It depends on how many you want. Uh, if you're wanting a small little group and selling the eggs, then Jumbo Wild is what you need to do. However, people love to have options. People love to have variety. Um, and so I'm a big believer in the colors. 
Uh, Jumbo Wilds are a necessity. Um, I think that everybody should have them. Uh, the colors are optional, but as far as running a business, I think colors are very important. You can give them a dust bath uh, at any point in time. They like that. Um, as far as the uh, timeline for quail, I guess we can say. Um, so, you know, they, they're in the incubator and locked down for 18 days. They hatch in 18 days. From day old until about three to four weeks old, they need to be in a brooder uh, with some light, um, some heat. Uh, after that, they can move out to a grow-out pen. If you're moving it outside, then I would recommend you keeping them in the brooder until they're about five weeks old. Um, and then uh, they start laying anywhere from, our jumbos typically start laying at five and a half weeks, uh, but typically they start laying between six to eight weeks. Uh, they're fully mature at 10 weeks, uh, and they lay for about a year and a half. They average about 300 eggs a year. They lay about 300 eggs a year. Um, the jumbos, so we have jumbo wilds, which are by far the jumbo of the jumbos. They're the largest, they're the largest eggs. Um, they're amazing. If anyone asks, when anyone asks me what kind of jumbo should they start with or what, time, what kind of jumbo should they get, I always, always, always recommend the jumbo wilds. They're the largest, they're feather flexible, so at three weeks old, you can tell what. Uh, if they're male or female, which is very, it's very nice to do. Uh, whereas the Jumbo Whites are about 12 ounces at full maturity compared to the 14 of Jumbo Wilds, but they're not feather sexable. So you have to wait six to eight weeks to even know if you've got a male or a hen. Um, the Whites uh, butcher, uh, like when you process them, they're a little bit cleaner when you do so. Uh, but the Jumbo Wilds are much, much easier to raise. Lean back, oh, okay. Sorry. I will not lean back. <clears throat> uh, if you have a mailbox delivery at the end of your driveway, will the post office call so you can get to them immediately? For the eggs? Um, that is a case-by-case -case basis. I would say... The majority of the time, the post office does. The, po <laughs> the post office has been doing much better overall, everywhere. Um, our post office knows us very well. We go through the back entrance every day. We know everybody by name. I mean, we're, you know, um, so they treat us great. Every other post office in the world doesn't know who we are. Uh, so it, They've been doing much, much better. Uh, I did give this number out yesterday, which I can uh, relate again. Out of the, so we're shipping 200, we'll say on average 250 boxes a week, right? So let's just say 250 boxes for, um, uh, what day is today, 14th, 13th. So we'll say uh, 369, we'll say 103 days. Uh, so that's 25,000 boxes. Out of those 25,000 boxes, we have had to reship 10 of them uh, due to damage or a really poor hatch rate, uh, usually because of the post office. So 10 out of 25,000 is not bad. Uh, so they do pretty well. Uh, you can also request, and I recommend this, if you're doing any poultry and shipping eggs, I, do I would let your customers know that they can request hold for pickup, uh, and put their phone number on the box. We do that quite a bit as well. Uh, what do you think about raising ground feed for first time raising quail? I think that's fine. I think that's fine. The growls are nice. They're, they're not jumbos, but they're fairly large. Um, they're fun to work with. Uh, you will get some uh, some different stuff out of it, which is kind of fun. Um, and they're pretty good layers. So, yeah, the growl fees are pretty good if you're not going for jumbos. Do you give 16 plus hours of light from birth? Do you worry about too much light affecting their health? Too much light could affect them. 
Um, it could overstress and overstimulate them. Uh, they're, uh, how do I want to say this? Okay. We give them light, because we use a, a heat lamp, we give them light 24 hours a day for the first two and a half weeks. After that, they go to 18 hours of light a day. Um, we don't want to overstress them. When they're young and they're not producing eggs or they're not mature, the light really doesn't bother them. Uh, when they are laying, uh, 24 hours a day does kind of put, uh, you know, it, it puts a lot of stress on them. So yeah, 16 to 18 hours a day would be ideal. What age do we change? We switch out our breeders once a year. Um, yes, we switch out our breeders once a year. That was, that was a fast answer. Uh, how do you come up with your prices? Ooh, that's a really great question. Um, was that from a student? All right. Oh, I can't allowed to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, so prices. When you are coming up with the prices, I know a lot of people... Um, you know, and if we're talking about homestead, not necessarily quail, but if we're talking about rabbits or chickens or ducks or geese or whatever, um, number one, you need to do your market research. Your market research is going to show you what other people are selling, um, how many they're selling, what they're selling for. Um, you want to be in the ballpark of what everyone else is selling. However, with that being said, you need to know how much it costs you. So for example, if, uh, okay, for example, we work with someone that's in New Jersey. New Jersey slash New York. They're like right on the border. Cost of living there is much higher. <clears throat> Sorry, much higher. So the cost of feed, the cost of this, the cost of that is much, much higher there. So with that being said, they sell their eggs, like we'll ship them 100 live birds at a time uh, for what we sell them for on our website. They up the price and resell them because it's easier and better for them to buy them from us and just resell rather than raising their own. Um, so because I ship everywhere, uh, it's a little bit difficult, um, but the average price is about 50 cents an egg uh, for Caternix eggs. Uh, so that's where we're at. Uh, we know what it costs. We're making, a, we're making a little bit per egg, but we're also doing quite a bit of eggs a day. Um, so, you know, every penny adds up. Uh, and then, so for example, we have our jumbo Egyptians that are 50 cents, okay? They are a standard jumbo. They're about 11 and a half to 12 ounces at full maturity. A jumbo is 10 ounces. So they're about a standard jumbo. They're 50 cents. Our jumbo wilds are 14 ounces. They eat a lot more. We spend a ton of time uh, with our breeding program with them. Uh, so they're 60 cents a piece. And then for example, we have like our pearls. Our pearls are probably our most popular rare color, our fancy color. We have spent so much time developing that, working that, doing research on it, that they're a dollar each because they are rare. Uh, so be fair, number one, and make sure you're not working for free um, and be competitive. You don't want to undercut anyone. That's not how you want to make do business. You also don't want to be so high that you're never going to make any money anyway. Uh, so it's that, that balance. What got you into this unique market? Uh, very good question. So, um, we were raising meat chickens uh, for a couple years, and when I, I can't express to you how much I hate chickens. Like, on a scale from zero to a billion, it's a billion. Like, they're just, they're, I hate, they're, I don't like anything about them. I hated butchering them. I hated taking care of them. I hated the smell of them. They were dumber than a box of rocks. We kept getting in trouble. I just, I couldn't stand them. So we were butchering one day, and I looked at Jen, and I said, for the love of anything, 
please find something else. Let's just try anything else. Uh, she got Caternix, and, um, and we never looked back. So, uh, you know, they lay all year long. Um, they are smaller, you know. I mean, they're, if, you, if it, it takes about two to three, depending on the type of person you are, but it takes two to three for a meal, right? But on the same token, a Caternix quail, you can raise, hatch the egg out, and raise again within, what, uh, six, eight, nine, ten, 14 weeks. So in 14 weeks, you can raise a chicken from, uh, raise a quail from a chick, have it lay an egg, incubate the egg, and then raise it again for that chick to lay eggs. So, I mean, it's just, it's such a fast turnaround. It is an absolute phenomenal way to be self-sufficient. <clears throat> what temperature and humidity to incubate? Uh, temperature needs to be 99.5 degrees the entire time. Uh, I highly recommend that that does not fluctuate. It really, really should stay at 99.5. Um, if we're talking about, you know, 0.5 a degree, not that big of a deal, but I mean, it really needs to stay consistent. The humidity during incubation, which means the first 14 days when it's turning every day, uh, needs to be 45%, give or take, for about 45%. At lockdown, it needs to be between 65 and 75%. The reason that you increase it so much is because you need to soften, the, the higher the humidity, the softer the shell will be. So for them to break out, their shell needs to be softer to help them uh, hatch out. <clears throat> is male to female ratio about 50-50 from hatching eggs? Yeah, and that's, that's pretty much everything. Um, we do recommend that you do a 5 to 1 ratio in your cages. How small of a scale did you start and how fast did it grow to what these become? You're going to have to ask me that again. How small were you when you started? Okay. And how long did it take to get where you're at now? Ooh, uh, that's a Jenna question. Um, well, we started with... I think we, we locally picked up some jumbos about an hour away, and we started with live birds. They were live jumbos. Uh, and then almost around the same time, we had ordered some uh, SSCs, some silvers, at the same time. That's, that's what we started with, is hatching eggs, and we hatched those out. Um, I'm a big believer that if you're starting a business, slow and steady wins the race. I have seen a ton of businesses, not just in the quail world, but a ton of businesses everywhere that get as big as they can, as fast as they can, uh, and they miss all these little small details to learn along the way because they're just working on getting big and getting big and getting big and making money. Um, we probably could have been this big three years ago, but we just moved into this barn less than six months ago. We are taking our time. Uh, we're developing relationships with our corporate accounts, with our online customers, with Facebook customers, um, and, uh, and our number one objective is not to make money. Our number one objective is to show, to have a business that should be ran the way it's ran and not profit first. Uh, we really put customers first. I think a lot of people see that in what we do. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. Uh, and I, I've, I don't know how many emails and messages and phone calls I've gotten um, that, uh, that inspires them to do the same in, in their business. Uh, and that's what I would suggest you do. Slow and steady wins the race. Take your time. The sales will be there as long as you're doing things correctly um, and have a plan. Does temperature affect production? As I can only have them outside, or mainly just give them 16 hours of light and good heat. <clears throat> That's a great question. Was that from a student? All right. <laughs> that was a great question. So um, the there's 
two major factors in breeding and breeding pretty much any animal, uh, and that is genetics and feed. So if you have good genetics, great genetics, but you have a really poor feed, you're going to destroy it. If you have really great feed, but really are really great gen genetics and poor opposite, <laughs> if you do opposite, uh, then it still doesn't work. So you have to have them both hand in hand. Um, the outside thing will uh, affect productivity a little bit, but if you've got really good genetics and you've got a great feed, it's, it's not, I wouldn't worry about it, wouldn't stress. How many people does it take to operate my side thing? It takes an army, <laughs> takes an army. Um, George works in the quail barn about 40 hours a week, a little over. Uh, I work on average 12, 14, 15 hours a day, every day. Uh, Jenna mainly does the back end stuff, but she usually comes down about twice a week to help out uh, for a full day. Um, Dennis obviously built this barn, builds the cages, uh, continues to, uh, to build things for us. Uh, and then I've got five children, uh, and they come down when we need it, but only when I ask. Trenton does pretty well coming down about three times a week asking if we need help, but every, all the other ones run the opposite way. How big of a role does social media play into your operation? Um, my dream, I would love to have a storefront. I love meeting people. I love seeing people face to face. I love interacting with people face to face. Um, and we do the farm pickups and we do the live things like this and we do YouTube videos and, and you know, we're on Facebook quite a bit. <clears throat> um, but social media is the way of the future. It's the way of the present. Um, and uh, you got to get with the times or you're going to get left behind. So social media is vital, vital for any business. Does temperature of the egg relate to sex of the bird like in reptiles? No. No. As far as I know, and I could be wrong, as far as I know, it's only in reptiles that makes a difference like that. I don't know of anything else that does, but definitely not with poultry. <clears throat> Do you use medicated food or any electrolytes or apple cider vinegar or any additives at all? Uh, we use some electrolytes every once in a while, um, which George and I will have to discuss. I have, we need to add some. Um, we don't sup, we don't use medicated feed. Uh, and uh, we tried the, the, what is it, the apple cider vinegar, apple, whatever. Uh, we tried that a while ago and it worked. It's just for all the cages we got, we don't, we can't do that. But we do put electrolytes in the waters. Do you need to have a veterinarian on staff? It depends on what you raise. Uh, I wouldn't say on staff, I would say on call. Uh, but uh, with Caternix, no, not really. Um, I would recommend that if you're doing Caternix, um, you should get MPIP. That's the National Poultry Improvement Plan. Plan? Plan. Uh, you can look it up online. Um, they come out once a year, but you can also be AI clean. Uh, and they, that brings them out twice a year. Uh, and that is an amazing, amazing resource to have. They are experts. They know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. Uh, and, you know, we have a great relationship with our inspector and with her, his boss. <clears throat> that covered the question that just come in. Are there any governmental or regulatory agencies you have to deal with? Uh, if you're selling locally, if you're not shipping eggs or live birds out uh, across state lines, no. As far as Ohio goes, everywhere is a little bit different, but as far as Ohio goes, you don't need anything for Caternix quail. 
but if you're going to cross state lines, you do need to be MPIP uh, certified. You do, AI is a voluntary thing that we choose to do. Um, but they're super easy to get along with and very helpful. We're all caught up. Okay, that's great. Uh, so does anybody else have any other questions? <clears throat> Uh, I know that a lot of people had uh, interest in the uh, <clears throat> sales aspect as far as margin or dollar amount or things like that. Uh, so if you guys have any questions like that, I'd try to help you as much as I can. And Brad, I am messaging you now. I got to really put my phone on, on do not disturb when I'm doing videos. Uh, so I did just message you. Um, is there any other questions? If I send you a cage, would you test it for me? If I send you, I don't know what that means. So I'm going to send you a cage and have you test it. Cage, like a cage that you built? I need a little bit more clarification. Someone asked me that one time and they meant like send me their birds and then send them back to them and I can't do that. We're not allowed to bring anything in. Do you only sell live and eggs or do you butcher on site? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Do you only sell live birds and eggs or do you butcher on site? Uh, we sell live birds and eggs we're really getting away from the butchering. Um, our falconry, reptile, wildlife reserve um, is really taking most of all of our males, which is what we used to butcher. Uh, we still do a little bit of butcher for our corporate accounts to make them happy, but I try to get out of it as, as much as I can. Of how to make the pages you use because I want to make it. Keep hitting the wrong button. Uh, uh, Papa, <clears throat> wow. Papa did do a video on our YouTube channel um, about how he builds the cage. Uh, it is a smaller cage, um, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, went into a lot of depth, it's about an hour long. Uh, but yeah, you would just do that at a larger scale. And he kind of goes into, if you are doing it at the larger scale, this is what you would do. You said that you don't butcher your hens. What do you do with them? Uh, we use them for egg production. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we use them for egg production. Uh, at the end of their productivity, um, we use them. Very little, very few things go to waste here. We try to find a market for everything. Um, everything. Okay, the guy that wants to send the page, he said, I have a colony page system design. It is part of what I want to do as a business. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, if you want to uh, message me or text me at 937-760-7282, uh, I can try to help you out as much as I can. How much does it cost you to build the quail pages that you have, including the people you have? Oh, I have no idea. Wouldn't even be able to guess. Uh, that is a Papa question. Um, he was just on our... Okay, so every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do a, a live Q&A uh, for people to be able to join and ask their Caternix questions or things like that. So kind of like what we're doing now, I do that every Sunday. Um, so I'm going, to bring, I'm going to be bringing Papa along. I think we determined that it was going to be every other week uh, that he would join the Q&A. Um, so we can ask him that, uh, two weeks from yesterday, he'll be back on, but I have no idea. Do 
you help any struggling chicks get out of their eggs? Okay. Say that again. Do you help any struggling chicks get out of their eggs? Sometimes. Um, we really shouldn't, but I feel bad. Usually they don't do well, but I've got issues with that. Um, all right, so is there any other questions? Okay, uh, well, uh, Edison Community College, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you have anything else, you can feel free to find me on Facebook, uh, Zach Green. Um, it's a picture of a quail, obviously. Uh, My Shire Farm on Facebook, or you can text me at 937-760-7282 if you have any other questions. Uh, we really appreciate it. Hopefully we can do this again, uh, and I can come to you guys in person, uh, and we can talk more in depth. Uh, but, uh, but I appreciate you joining on, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody.